Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the uniform continuous distribution. The uniform distribution is most commonly thought of as a discrete distribution because it can take on countable values. However, the uniform distribution can also work for continuous distributions as long as all of the values have equal probabilities of occurring. So let's take a look at an example of how we would solve for a uniform continuous distribution. In this example, let's assume that the weight of a randomly chosen American passenger car is uniformly distributed as a random variable and it ranges anywhere from 2,500 pounds to 4,500 pounds. We can calculate our standard deviation, our mean, and then we already have our minimum value in the range, which is 2,500 pounds, and our maximum value in the range, which is 4,500 pounds. The notation here is similar to what we use for the discrete distribution for the uniform distribution in that we have our A and our B values. As we look at this, it's still a uniform distribution, again, because any of our values between A and B have an equally likely chance of occurring. And then our cumulative distribution function grows linearly because each one has an equally likely chance of occurring. So in this example, I've set these up where I have my values and my calculations again um, in here. So you'll see me change the font color. Our value for A, our minimum value in the range is 2,500. We know that from the given information. And for B, the maximum value in the range is 4,500 pounds, which is also given in our equation sorry, which is also given in our problem statement. We can use this information then to solve for our mean or mu, which is a plus b divided by two. So in this case, in our template, this is cell b11 plus b12, the sum of those values divided by two. So our average is 3,500, which makes sense because it's right in the middle of our minimum and our maximum values. Our standard deviation then can be calculated as the square root of B, which is cell B12, minus A, which is cell B11, squared, divided by 12, which is a constant, so it will always be 12, and then we take the square root of that calculation. So our standard deviation is 577.35 pounds, which means we have quite a bit of variation within our weight of our, of, for the American passenger cars. Once we have this basic information then, we can also solve for probabilities that a vehicle will weigh less than a certain amount, more than a certain amount, or between a certain amount. So let's take a look at the probability that a vehicle will weigh less than 3,000 pounds. We can solve for that by taking our value of x, which is 3,000 pounds, which we would input here in cell B24, and then our probability will be the 3,000 pounds minus A, which was in cell B11, that value divided by our value of B, which was in cell B12, the 4,500 pounds, minus B11, which was a 2,500 pounds. That tells us that the probability that a vehicle will weigh less than 3,000 pounds is 25%. And again, if we look at that graphically, which I always encourage you to do, that would be our minimum of 2,500 pounds, our maximum of 4,500 pounds, and if we looked at where 3,000 pounds fell, that would be the lower quarter of our data. So 25% makes sense. Likewise, we can solve for the probability that a vehicle will weigh more than 4,000 pounds. The equation's a little bit different here because we're taking one minus a certain value because we're solving for everything to the left of that value so we're subtracting from one to get the right of that value, which is our 4,000 pounds. 
So our x value will be 4,000 pounds, and then our probability will be 1 minus our x value, the 4,000 pounds, which is in cell B29, minus our value of A, which was in cell B11, that value divided by B12, which was our, our B, minus A, which was in cell B11. So that gives us a value of 0.25 or 25%, which also, if we looked at that graphically, would be that top quarter of our values. So far, we've looked at the probability that it will weigh less than 3,000 pounds and more than 4,000 pounds. We can also look to see what the probability is that the vehicle will weigh between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds. So now we're looking at that middle half, essentially, of our data. So we're going to introduce two new variables, our C and our D values, because that's going to be what we're looking at our values between. Our C value will be the 3,000 pounds, the lower part of that range we're looking for. And our D will be our max between values, because we're looking at between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds. So our probability that our weight is between C and D will solve for next. To do that, we're going to take the numerator portion first, our value of D, which is in cell B35, minus our value of C, which is in cell B34, and we're dividing that by our value of B, which was in cell B12, minus our value of A, which was in cell B11. And that will give us 50%, which is what we would expect because we've already solved for below 3,000, which was 0.25, above 4,000, which was 0.25, so we're left with a middle portion, which is 0.5 or 50%.